All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews. We're back. Uh, I know it's been a little bit, but uh, it's been a busy week, and I'm finally getting around to rewatching uh, The Hunting of Hill House, uh, episode four, The Twin Thing. Uh, so we're going to cover that today. Full spoilers if you haven't seen the episode. If you want a non spoiler review, as usual, you can watch my two part uh, review of the entire series uh, that I did earlier. First part's completely non spoiler, second part is about halfway non spoiler. The rest is kind of gives away some stuff. Um, the twin thing. So this is a decent episode. It's really, again, it's, it's really, it's all the characterization. This is Luke's episode. Um, and the theme in this, uh, episode is really just how, uh, whether or not he was, a, when he was a little kid and as an adult, nobody ever believed Luke. Nobody ever believes Luke. Uh, he's, it's a theme that he says throughout the entire show. You know, as a little kid, when you see things that uh, you know are real, but nobody believes you, nobody ever believes you. That's what he keeps saying. You know, no, mom and dad never believe me. Nobody ever does. So when he grows up, um, and you know, after sir, you know, the ordeal that they've lived through, and with uh, you know the haunting and the haunt, all the things they've seen, and then their loss of their mother, and and everything else, you know, Luke has become a junkie and he's become a burden to his family and you know whenever he says you know that he's changed and he's clean or whatever nobody ever believes him and it's just a common thread for him uh and it, it's it's pretty on the nose but it's a nice little thing for this character I mean, not nice but it's this character's kind of arc um that you know and, and the little boy that plays him uh younger version uh Julian Hilliard, he is he is just as adorable as uh, the girl who plays Young now. Uh, I saw an interview with him on the red carpet for the show, and you know you would think I was expecting to hear um, one of these like really well spoken, um, you know, child actors that you know you can just tell have been doing it for a while, and it was just it was refreshing to see him just be a kid. Um, and that really gave me, like, I, I really, I really liked that because, again, you know, it's, you, you usually see a lot of these kid actors, um, they're pretty full of themselves <laughs> a lot of times, um, even at that age. And it, it's nice to see this kid, you know, just being, acting like a kid, like he, he didn't know the answers and stuff. But anyway, also the, you know, the adult version, Oliver Jackson Cohen, um, I've never really seen him in anything that I can think of, like, off the top of my head. Um, but he's really good too. He's he's f far <laughs> removed from what the little kid looks like, but that's that's fine. That you know you can kind of see the little kid in the bit in this guy just because of uh, the the trauma that he's suffering and and with drugs you know still suffering. Um, so Nell saw the bent neck lady. Uh, Luke sees Abigail and the guy with the bowler hat or the missing bowler hat, the guy who's floating around the house looking for his hat. Uh, that guy's pretty creepy. Uh, that whole scene was really creepy and well done. Um, I was still like tensed out when I was watching it. I also really liked the scene um, where they have the uh, the, the little horn, the little uh, mic, like old timey mic where people would call down for things to like the kitchen and stuff. And you know, they can hear somebody going like, they go up there and there's nobody there and then he sees the reflection of the dead lady in there. It's pretty great. I mean, the button's coming down and then not coming down. Um, the whole thing with Abigail, um, you know, seeing her, I mean, we all clearly are like, this kid's, you know, it's got to be a ghost. You know, we don't have the full story on that yet. Um, but the other, you know, the main part of this is Luke uh, trying to stay clean. Um, and, you know... He's got this kind of personal relationship in the recovery place uh, with this other late girl that, you know, does believe him, does, you know, like have his back, you know, things that, you know, he doesn't, haven't, hasn't really had with his family because of, you know, the things that he's put them through uh, as far as, you know, stealing from them and breaking their hearts is in Nell's case and, you know, just disappointing them and, you know, but he has her, and so when she dips out on him after nine months of sobriety, he can't 
stay there, uh, especially after he wakes up like everybody else with that neck thing uh, and sees Nell at the end of his bed saying, go. Um, <laughs> thing is, is like everybody's misinterpreting these things. And, and of course they are because Nell is dead and she's sending him a message from beyond the grave, which doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. He hears go, finds out that a uh, girl left and thinks it means that he needs to go after her, that Nell's telling him to go after her. Um, I don't believe that that's what that means, um, but he takes it that way and he tries to track her down. He does. Um, and kind of like how he's trying to help her and in the program, they warn you about, uh, you know, getting too close and things like that. Um, you know, she, having, you know, he ends up kind of being on the other end of things that, you know, he goes out of his way to help her and she does kind of what he has done to his family, which is, you know, she takes the money and runs. Um, and I don't, I don't think that's like karma or anything, but it's just kind of like flip side of, of things for him. The whole thing where he keeps seeing this guy, uh, pretty, pretty creepy. Um, I like the whole thing with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, where he, you know, has his little soldiers up there that it's the family, the family unit, you know, putting them together, counting it. It takes all seven of us, um, to, to stay safe. This, you know, the family dynamic that keeps them safe. You know, counting out out loud, you got to say it a lot sometimes. Um, I really like that. And it's kind of now without Nell, they're not safe. And without their mother, they weren't safe. Like they, once things started going down, it, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know if it's quite a metaphor or whatever, but down to people in their family, they have become more vulnerable. And I think that's why this thing is still following them around. If they... Uh, had been whole, I think that they would have came out of this unscathed uh, for the most part. And not just because the mother died and, and, you know, and things just kind of, you know, they blame their father, they start, you know, separating and going their own ways and the trauma that they suffered is causing them to all live different lives. I think, all, you know, of course, if their mother didn't die, it would be, you know, a whole different story, but it really just feels like they're all just, they're all haunted in their own way without a haunted house. It's just that the, the actual scary stuff is still following them around. Um, the way though, when he turns around and sees his mom uh, wearing the hat and does that crazy thing with her, you know, like the eyes light up, come home. Like the house is trying to get them all back to get finish the job that it started. Um, so far it's taken their mother and now we know that it's taken now. Um, I did like the scene where, you know, him and you know, Luke and his girl uh, go to Steve's house, you know, and they're both in the program and how she's very blunt with his family, you know, his brother and her, his girlfriend, you know, kind of showing like the strong, you know, connection that he has with this woman, you know, uh, just to see it blow up in his face later is, is even more sad. Um, the stuff when when they find the stuff in the attic, um, again the little Nell girl, oh my god! Um, but when the mom puts on the sh like the shawl, and immediately she's like, "I have deja vu," and she gets very specific about what she is no noticing about the house and like from the details, like she's not having deja vu. Like as soon as she put that shit on, she started like seeing shit from the house from the past. Uh, it's already got its hooks in her. Um, and, and knowing what you know now, you know, it's just even more creepy that this place was just feeding off these people, uh, is insane. And I feel, I feel so bad, like, as far as like the father, because if you think about it, their father is the only one that really was never affected by, uh, any of this, uh, outwardly, like he wasn't seeing shit until like the last bit. Um, you know, he, he... You know, he, they did find the body in the wall, but like he was never really experiencing any of the paranormal stuff. And I, I wonder if that's because of the mom's side of the family is the one with uh, all the latent, you know, kind of psychic uh, things in their in their history. And that he, as in, you know, not their, not her blood, you know, of course, is the, you know, kind of the, 
the poor, the straight man, if you will, to this ghost story where he just, he never sees anything. He just has to try to uh, soldier on as a parent and deal with all this stuff that he can't see like everybody else does. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, except that at the end, you know, when Steve and him say that, you know, Steve tells him that Nell committed suicide and he tells her, tells Steve that, no, she didn't commit suicide. Finally, that thing that he's doing with the back of his neck makes sense to him that he knows that, you know, that she's dead. And that pain is the pain that she felt in her neck when she hung herself. Um, and that's pretty much it. I know I haven't gotten into depth, I think, as much as the other episodes, but unfortunately, Luke's story is kind of the... Well, I mean, the first episode with Stevens, Stephen got the benefit of it being, like, the beginning story, so it was, like, this great beginning. Luke here, he's around the, getting to the, the middle uh, of the series, and he kind of gets the short end of the stick as far as episodes go. It's still really good, and I definitely... Uh, can relate to the whole recovery thing. I mean, I've never, I never went to rehab or anything, but I, I've been sober. I chose t uh, to stop drinking about a year and a half ago. And, you know, I, I kind of get the whole, sometimes you, you feel like you're going through withdrawal and you haven't even used. I definitely, definitely get that. And I know that that's more maybe of a, uh, it could have been more of a supernatural thing they were talking about, but I definitely get some of this. It does kind of hit home. Uh, I've never ripped off my family or anything like that, but <laughs> um, being a disappointment and, and, you know, when you do, you know, use, you know, like alcohol is, is a little different than heroin, but sometimes, you know, your internal guilt when you know you're kind of hiding things from people and stuff is, is, is there as well. So anyway, that's it for the twin thing. Um, Another really good episode. Uh, the next two are probably the best of the series. I will be getting to those uh, shortly. Otherwise, uh, if you liked this video, please hit the like button, comment, share. Let me know, like uh, everybody, what you guys think of this episode. Um, uh, hit the bell for all notifications. I know we're kind of slow going on this, but it's been I've been having a lot of hectic stuff going on, so uh, bear with me. Uh, we've also got homecoming. Uh, I did the first two uh, episodes. I was going to have the second two episodes up this morning, but uh, I was kind of interrupted, so I wasn't able to go back and do that. I was also uh, wrong about Patriot Season 2 coming out uh, today. That doesn't come out till next Friday, so I'll be starting to review that. Otherwise, you can check out my series, Season 1 review of that. It's a recommendation. I highly recommend everybody check out Patriot Season 1. It's on Amazon if you have it. Uh, otherwise, this is Robert Smirking Interview saying we will be back again probably tomorrow at some point with something. I have no idea what that's going to be yet, though. <laughs> so anyway, have a great night, and we will see you later.